take a bow or anything. We always no, are just like, really. we wait for the applause to wash I over think us. You should do a Leno thing, just run out in the audience, start high fiving everybody. Just start high fiving <laughs> the audience. Yeah. <laughs> you remember when he started doing that? Yeah, I remember when he started doing that. that was, by the way, that was, was also sad. the last time I watched the show. I think I think <laughs> I was fantastic. I think I was actually working on the show when that happened. Oh, don't I was there the first year. Oh, and I think yeah, I think no, they did because they switched. They moved from stage one to stage three, and then he decided to high five. When we Moving move it, when we move into that sound stage, yes. that's what yes. we're going to do. Great. Well, we are closer to that. You know that's why? Right. Because we have, as of this moment, 1.2 million live viewers. Woo! Come on, 1.2 million. <laughs> So at this right moment, <laughs> we're doing better than Conan did when he took over the Tonight Show. <laughs> Look at that. Aren't we fantastic? Okay, we're actually getting even more fantastic. Wade Major. Yes, we are. It's a great show this evening. Wade Major. And Mark Kaiser. Yes. <laughs> We've done 40 of these things. Can't get it right. Okay, so we, we have two fantastic guests coming up. Yes, we do. Now, we have one fantastic guest coming up today. Yes, here in studio. Philip Nelson. The king of parental guidance. I, always, I, I was never sure if he was real, if he was maybe the same person as Chad Vader, because they're never on <laughs> at the same time, you know? So I have news for you. Chad Vader will also be on tonight. Oh, see, there Not we live, go. though. Not live. Proof. Interesting. Yeah. Not live. Beard strokingly interesting. No, yes, yeah. he's live, but not here live. You're right, Corey. He is actually live. <laughs> All right, so he, By the he, way, we have beer tonight. <laughs> New tell. Tech has given us beer and pizza for tonight. Woo! <laughs> not only do we get a TriCast, you're going to hold up your baby. That's Hold up. Oh God, He's got to hold up his baby. <laughs> so not only does he, but we also have, yeah, we also have beer and TriCaster and pizza. Go ahead. Uh, I, by the way, <laughs> I do not drink beer. Or eat pizza. I eat pizza. I just don't drink beer. I don't. Snob. Okay. I'm, no, I just don't like beer. Snob. Not true. <laughs> so what else, what, else, what else we got going on, Mark? <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Teetotaler. On the t Oh, that's not true. I, I have thrown up on the floor at some very nice restaurants. <laughs> oh, no, you're okay. You're, so let me just tell you. Uh, we got, we, we got, we're, we'll be talking about throw up later, so don't. That is true. Don't ruin okay, it. here's the thing. Uh, uh, mark your calendars, mark your iPhones, your Blackberries. Uh, October 21st, Wade. Mm -hmm. David Leaf. Now, David Leaf is a documentary producer. He has a new film out called um, Who is Harry Nielsen? Yes. Now, uh, Harry, uh, as you know, yeah. very famous yeah, yeah. songwriter. Mm hmm. He wrote, wait, come on, Everybody's Talking from Midnight Cowboy. Oh, yeah, okay, that's right. That's right. He's done a lot of great songs. Of and uh, uh, he's had a really interesting life. Here's the thing. You know, the thing with these documentary people is they introduce you to people you didn't even know had an interesting life. Exactly. So we, like Harry. It's like yeah. legit. We have, like, a legit filmmaker on. And he also yeah. did uh, 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 The U.S. versus John Lennon. Which is a great movie. Which is a great That's documentary. A great doc. And we'll be talking about John Lennon later on, whichever camera I'm on. Yeah. When we talk about Nowhere Boy. You betcha. Um, and also The Night James Brown Saved Boston. So David Leaf will be here. He's not doing a, a celebrity uh, 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 try this at home. He's talking about his films, and that's enough. This is now. This is legit. You guys will talk about. You know, oh yeah, Questions. Yeah. We'll take questions from the message boards. If you have questions for actual filmmakers, especially documentary. Uh, feel free to go stupidformovies.com and go to our message boards. Awesome. So says Mike. Okay, now on the 28th, now is it the 21st? Wasn't good enough. The following week. The following week. We Halloween. have Halloween. Yes. Halloween special. That's a Halloween special. Uh, Producer Mike, are we going to be addressing the set for Halloween? Um, yeah. Sure. We have a huge budget to do. Look that. at that. We're dressing the set. <laughs> Mark will be in costume. Come back. We're dressing the set. Mark I is a harem girl, and huh? Wade is a member of Kiss. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. I will make you this. So I glad it wasn't you, the other way around. I will make you this promise. If Mike can actually come up with a harem girl costume, I will wear it <laughs> okay. on the 28th. <laughs> That's not too I, tough. <laughs> I am saying that here for you right now. Um, we're, we're, okay. I may wear my own clothes over We it, will take PayPal donations for the harem costume <laughs> on Super <laughs> Movies, and I'm sure we'll get enough money to spend the $20 to get your Oh, I'll, I'll, I will, I'll donate. Yeah. I'll, well, I'll wait, donate right after the show. Okay, I'm about to humiliate myself <laughs> in front of seven listeners. And four viewers. And yes. one point two million. And Hello? one point two million live. You can't users. really do that. You can't really do the self-deprecating jokes when we're one of the top live shows on the web right now. It's kind of hard to do that now. I know. But yeah, I, we've I, kind of, we've kind of, we've legit, we're legit suddenly. I like being able to say that though. Yeah, it's a little. Yes. It's a little okay, so uh, on the twenty eighth, which is the Halloween show, where I will be dressed as a harem girl, mm -hmm. uh, I guess. Um, Laura <laughs> Kylinger will be here. Laura yes. Kylinger, come on, great stand-up comedy. Now, Laura is a celebrity. Try this at home, celebrity. Now, should we tell people? Yeah, yeah. We should. Give them time. We don't want to give them one week. You now have three weeks? Two weeks? What are we looking at? Three weeks. Yeah. 27th to get this movie. Mark, what movie did she pick? A movie that was NC-17. Actually, was it unrated or NC-17? I believe it was NC-17. And I remember I saw it with my father at yes. the New Art Theater in West Los Angeles, California. Before very you were 17. Yes. Very controversial. Yeah. Henry, 
portrait of a serial killer. It was NC-17. It was NC-17. Yeah, it was. Very controversial. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. You know what? It's it's a terrific movie. When, when mm -hmm. you look at it now, it's basically like a Disney film. No. You know what's like a Disney yeah. film is uh, Nanny Moretti's uh, uh, Caro Diario, their diary. I was just thinking that. It's Which weird actually, how the two of us are like <laughs> this. Because wow. you see, the, Henry Porter of a serial, killer, a serial Killer figures into the Nanny Moretti film. This weekend in movies! <laughs> Let's do it! Okay, right. wait, wait, wait. Okay, J-Mac, what comes out? What, now, if you're counting no. down, no, let's it. say you're counting down from five. He had the TriCaster going opposite. Usually it usually does a countdown. He's going to count up. So it's like seven, eight, nine. What the? <laughs> it yeah, didn't count I, down. He pressed I the... I apologize. Yeah. Right. He pressed the wrong so, button. So we're going we're gonna to start off, right? We are. By talking about uh, Life As We Know It, the uh, Josh Duhamel, Catherine Heigl film. Woo! How do you How do you feel about <laughs> Catherine Heigl movies? Uh, I did not see this film because I hate her. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and basically, I'm sorry that I didn't see this film. If you've seen any movie about a couple that hate each other, and by the end of the movie, they love each other, and uh, in between you got babies throwing up and pooping and all that, uh, all that kind of stuff, that's this movie. Knock yourselves out. I'm done. done. I got nothing that's more it. to say about that that's movie. That's it. We hate it. It's, it's a, it, you know what? And he it's didn't even a, see it, and he hates it, so I, we're done. I can tell you already I hate it. Okay, yeah. so the good thing is that it only goes up from there. Yeah, absolutely. In terms of the weekend movie. <laughs> absolutely. Wow, that, yeah. was, that was actually oh, yeah. the first review. I love yeah. that. That was it. Moving yeah, on to the second it. review. There's no, there's no, now there's we're no talking. <laughs> All right, so wait, so here we go. The second film. <laughs> yes. Secretariat. Secretariat. Tell us about Secretariat. Secretariat is uh, basically the story of the famous horse, which today, it's the last horse to win the Triple Crown. We haven't had this, you know, it's been decades since uh, any other horse has even come close. Nobody, it's con widely considered the greatest racehorse in history. Now, I personally think Seabiscuit is a better movie. Seabiscuit had a better director, Gary Ross. Uh, this, for a director, is unfortunately saddled with Randall Wallace, who I think is a bit of a hack. Uh, wrote Braveheart, went on to direct things like uh, We Were Soldiers and other movies that are just simply not worth mentioning. Um, uh, despite Randall Wallace, the movie actually does kind of work. It works in an Apollo 13 sort of way, where you know where the movie's going, you know how it's going to end up, um, but there's a certain kind of measured joy in going along for the ride, even though there's no mystery to it whatsoever. Diane Lane plays the amazing owner of Secretariat, uh, John Malkovich, the very eccentric trainer, and we've got a clip. My accountants, they may be slow of foot, but they are quick to calculate. And they tell me that you're in a rough spot. So I'll buy that horse of yours right now. Seven million dollars, all cash. If he does what I think he'll do, his value will double, if not triple. You do know what you're saying. You're guaranteeing that this horse is going to win the Triple Crown. The Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont. Three races, three states, in just five weeks. Hasn't been done in 25 years. That is exactly what I'm saying. Eight million. No. You're that stubborn. I'm that right. Now, that is, uh, that's James Cromwell there is the wealthiest man in the world trying to intimidate Penny Chenery, who's, she's got spunk. She's got gumption. She's not going to give up. Uh, oddly enough, this movie actually could have some kind of a political effect. You know that? Have uh, you please, thought about that? Tell us. Because, you know, part of the, we, we, not to get political on the show, but what's interesting is I heard a lot of people talking about this with the, with the Bush tax cuts are getting ready to expire. One of them is the inheritance tax. And it's a fundamental part of the story that the reason she had to just throw it all out there was that they were going to lose everything because of the inheritance tax. And Secretariat saved them from, you know, losing everything. Well, that's, you know, the, I, I found the film kind of stuffy. I love Seabiscuit. Seabiscuit yeah. is a great Seabiscuit movie. Seabiscuit is a, is a Gary film. Ross is a great filmmaker. Yeah. Uh, this film I found to be a little stuffy, but they did something smart, which is we already know how it's going to end, which is that uh, Secretary is going to win all the races. So it winds up being about this woman mm -hmm. who has to be very strong in dealing with this sort of uh, uh, male-dominated world of horse racing. And not only that, but the family is also sort of in these f uh, financial dire straits. And the horse, 
the horse is sort of an easy way out for the family yeah. to get out of those financial dire straits, but she insists on owning that horse, putting it out there, having it race. Yeah. So you get a lot of family dynamic in there, which is nice, because really that's all the story, that's all the drama that'll be in the story, because we already know the horse wins. Yeah, I, 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 again, I don't, it's n by no means the film that Seabiscuit was. Seabiscuit is a terrific film, but look, the horse is beautiful. Horses racing, just, there's a certain, there's a certain v visceral thrill in watching that. And uh, even though I'm not a big fan of the idea of horse racing, I think there's something about it that's kind of cruel. But, you know, I, I got into the scenes. I think Diane Lane is very, very good. I think John Malkovich is hilarious. I mean, he but that really movie is need, engaging. But again, because uh, the movie was, was, was a, a little stuffy, it needs John Malkovich. Oh, it absolutely it does. It. And when you first meet him, he brings all of that eccentric energy that he always brings, which it, it, it vitally needed at that point, because it is very kind of chock-a-block. It's very workmanlike, it's very predictable, it's all put together in a very, very comfortable, and he is that, you know, that asymmetrical angle that cuts right through the middle of all of it. And, and uh, you know, I, I enjoyed it. It's not a great film, but it's, if, you know, it's perfectly enjoyable. But, you know, Disney does that. You know, th this is a Disney film. Yeah. And, you know, Miracle was also a Disney film, the Kurt Russell film yeah. about the hockey, uh, yeah. the 1980 Olympic hockey team. Yep. Now, despite how much I wanted to dislike Miracle, yeah. I liked it. Yeah. I did like that movie. Uh, this film I did not like as much. I frankly, it's too much like Sea Biscuit for me to say. Unless you want to see your horse racing films projected on the big screen, this is your only shot. Otherwise, go run Sea Biscuit. Here's a question for you: Would it have improved the movie if, say, instead of Diane Lane, it had had Katherine Heigl? <laughs> I knew that was going to be the stupidest. <laughs> I had, there was no way on earth that was going to be a real question. Like Katherine Heigl in the Diane Lane part, Josh Duhamel. No, I want to see Katherine Heigl in the part of the horse. There Here's you. what I want to see. You know, they got the, the, the little jockey, the guy's like as big as this pen. I want to see that guy riding Katherine Heigl for a mile and a half around the Preakness track. That movie I would see. Katherine Heigl and Josh Duhamel on the track getting trampled as the horses go around? Oh, you know what? Actually getting trampled? Yeah. Good call. Yeah. I want to see that movie. There okay, so, so Secretariat, meh. Secretary, I, I'm a notch above you. It's not, it's not great, but I, I have nothing to complain about particularly. Oh, actually, I have nothing to complain about either. You know why? And then we'll get on to a, a, a Zach Galifianakis film that Wade saw. Because mm -hmm. when I saw Secretariat, I saw it in one of my beloved free food screenings. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've talked about how much I love my beloved free food. And you still gave food. it a meh? Hmm? You only gave it a meh. I, look, well, yeah, I cannot be bought. I cannot, out all the, all the little quiches, all the little desserts, you, can't buy me. But how do you rate the quiches? Well, you know, actually, here's what they had. They had a big cake in the shape of a horseshoe, very delicious cake. And they had that's a big, wasting a big, space, though. They had a big if cheese you fill flat. in the middle of it, that's more cake. No, no, it was filled in in the middle. Oh, it was? With cake. Okay, good. It was a big square cake. They had, they had, they had a horseshoe in the middle. Okay, I'm just making sure they're it, not chintzing out. Is, good. is, is Chad right. Vader here to fall asleep yet? Because it's about to no, happen. No, we're not in the news yet. Okay. So anyway, uh, so uh, uh, even though I got free food, uh, I, uh, the movie's okay. Okay, right. so tell us about the Zach Galifianakis film. This film is It's Kind of a Funny Story. One of the worst titles ever. It's Kind of a Funny Story. Don't mix up those words. It's not, it's a kind of funny story. It's kind of a funny story. Uh, this is based on a novel by Ned Vizzini that was apparently a really big deal some years ago. And uh, it's directed by uh, Anna, Fleck, uh, Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck. Now, Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck previously did two films that were very, very artsy, serious, indie, the first being Half Nelson, and the second being Sugar. Two completely different movies from each other and different from this. This is much more commercial. This is like 85% of 500 Days of Summer, which is already incredible given where I stand on 500 Days of Summer. Uh, the story here is you've got Keir Gildchrist, who plays a kid from a really screwed up family, and he's feeling maybe suicidal, but really depressed. So he goes to the hospital and says, I think I need some kind of medication. Uh, maybe at least check me in. And what they do is they check him into the, into the mental ward uh, because they don't have the youth ward set up. And anyway, he winds up stuck in the psych ward of this hospital for a week, along with a very eccentric collection of characters, one of whom is Zach Galifianakis, and another of whom is Emma Roberts. Let's take a look. But you shouldn't worry about rejections. You shouldn't. You can practice on me. Practice what? Asking Noel out. Uh, yep. no, that's I'll okay. I'll be Noel. I'll be Noel. No. I'm Noel. Uh. Hey, Craig. How's it going? Hey, Noel. I'm I'm well. How are you? Oh, good. I get out of here soon. This is pretty cool. Do you like music? Yeah, sure. I like live music. 
Uh, you're just gonna sit there the whole time you're asking her out? Stand up, I'm a lady. Now this is one of my favorite films of the year. I didn't expect it to be. I was unbelievably pleasantly surprised by this. Uh, Keir Gildchrist is really the person the movie hangs on. You could have put a Michael Cera in this part, it would have ruined the film. Uh, you could have put a Jesse Eisenberg in this part, it would have ruined the film. All of those guys who have typically played this kind of a role, the, 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 the loser, the outcast, all that. What makes Gildchrist so good, he's like, he's like a young Justin Long. There's something a little bit nerdy but really sympathetic and loving about him at the same time. You don't want to laugh at him, but you feel incredibly sympathetic toward him. Uh, Emma Roberts is unbelievable in this film. She's, uh, this is the best thing she's done by far. This is really her coming out as an actress. Finally, she's playing something other than a little mini Julia Roberts, her, her aunt. Uh, Zach Galifianakis knocks it out of the park. He's had a hard time showing up on screen doing anything other than Zach Galifianakis. Here, he does a little bit of that, but there's a much more serious guy in the middle. And it's, it, you start to get, to get the sense that there's a little bit of complexity going on. He's not just somebody from a Cuckoo's Nest uh, remake. There's a guy who really has a lot of issues, and he's somehow able to imbue that into this character that he normally plays. Um, all in all, a tremendous film, a terrific film, well written, uh, well directed, has some unbelievably great scenes that you will just, you, you, they make you love movies again. Uh, this is a must see for anybody, and I think this is gonna have maybe a dark horse shot at some awards going into the year end. Well, those, those two filmmakers, are, are they're terrific. They're great. I mean, Sugar, Sugar is one of the best films ever made about baseball, and it's not even really about baseball. No, it's about a baseball player. It's about a, base, about, it's about a baseball player. Yeah. And yet, it is completely authentic to the experience that these baseball players from the Dominican Republic have. It, and it, so those guys are very talented. These are three films, and what's really weird, this film is about relationships, and it's, it's, it's the most romantic film that they've made, and yet they were a couple for those first two films. They broke up just before they made this film. Is that right? Yeah, so they were officially broken up as a couple while they're making a movie that's basically about relationships. And yet it's the best film they've ever done. It's very much like the, uh, the relationship between the guy and the girl uh, from Once. Because they were a relationship True. at the time, and then they yes. broke up, and then they wound up touring together, and I'm not sure what happened to them since. But you know, I, yeah. I, Once, is like, I, Once is like a godlike film this is, this is a great film. This is just a great film. Really? Yeah, it's a great film. Wade go Major. see it. Everybody go see it. Who said Wade was a hater? I'm He's not. a lover. You say it every week. Huh? You say that every week. Because he hates everything. I'm very surprised. <laughs> you, you know what? I think Wade's one of the only people who's liked this film. Really? Yeah. People are bagging on it? A little bit. Why? Why I oughta? What the? What the? Bring it on. <laughs> Bring it on. Okay, so Bring uh, it on. Uh, so let's let's recap as we like to do. Live as we know it, piece of S, right? Yeah, okay. that's it. Secretariat, horse S. Uh, it's okay. decent. Decent. Absolutely And then it's decent. kind of a funny story. Awesome. Awesome. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. All right, so next is Nowhere Boy. And Nowhere Boy is about the teenage years of John Lennon. And what's interesting about the film is that it was directed by a British artist named Sam Taylor Wood, Sam Taylor Wood being a woman. And uh, what she decides to do is she's not really telling you the story about the, uh, the creation of the Beatles. She's really telling you a family melodrama. Because it turns out that John Lennon's childhood from about five until uh, kind of a little beyond the teenage years, what, they were very, very dramatic. And a lot of people who don't really know this will really kind of groove to the story, although I was a little troubled by the movie overall. Let's look at a clip first. I'm John. Paul. Want a beer? Oh, I'd love a tea. Is there any tea left, please? There's no tea left, John. No, didn't think so. You got that better front, haven't you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> I walk one, two, flat, three, five, four, five, six, seven, flat, eight, five, more. I punch a boom, start to drag. Fifty, the more I'm ready to sag. Man, I get to the top, and I'm too tired to rock. So uh, you didn't see it in that clip necessarily, but when John Lennon was about five years old, he was uh, given up by his mother uh, to go live with his aunt, played by Kristen Scott Thomas. So throughout his formative years, John Lennon was living with his aunt Mimi. Turns out that John Lennon's mother really lived with, sort of with a second family just a few blocks away. So when John Lennon became a little bit older, he wound up seeking out his real mother. And the crux of the film is the relationship, it's almost like a triangle between John 
the very stern Aunt Mimi who brought him up, and the mother who sort of introduces him to music. There's, uh, you know, it's funny, because in the film there's some very questionable choices, including this one, Wade, which is um, John's mother gives him a banjo. Mm -hmm. And that's where he sort of learns how to play the guitar, by yeah. playing this banjo. And in the film, in one of a couple of questionable choices, there's this effects move where it's to show the passage of time, you see John in the corner of the frame playing the banjo while everything around him goes in very fast motion to show that time is passing as yeah. he learns how to play the banjo. And stuff like that, especially for a film that takes place in, in the early 60s, I did not like that at all, or in the 50s. You know, that stuff didn't bother me quite so much. I like the film. I, I like it quite a bit. I, I, I've been trying to figure out why I don't love it. Because Here's it's why. Because it's normally the kind of film that I would just completely go nuts for. Here's why, you ready? Yeah. If the film was not about John Lennon, would you care about any of it? If this is a movie about Rudiger Cheese Baron, and Rudiger Cheese Baron lives like in Liverpool, cheese. huh? I'd like to know who the Baron is. It's an inside joke. This goes back a few weeks, but yeah. Okay, let's say it was about Rudiger Cheese Baron, Rudiger who's cheese a Baron. teenager who lives with his aunt, and it, he turns out that his, his mother is only a few blocks away, and mm -hmm. they, they rekindle their relationship. Would you care about the film? I could, but it would have to be done better than it is. That is true. Yeah. And what's, and, but I will give them credit uh, for this, which is there is very little reference to the Beatles. Like, they don't try to force Beatles references in the film because they feel yeah. they have to. In fact, there's one very sly there scene. Aren't, there, there aren't even any Beatles tunes in the movie. No. Uh, there, well, yeah. the film opens with a very famous chord, yes. which is about as much Beatley as, as, about as Beatley as it gets. As much as they were willing to uh, try and get away with without licensing. But also, but the, the yeah. thing about the film is that they didn't have to, because again, it's no, not about the Beatles. It's no. really about the quarrymen and how yeah. they started. And also, it, there's a there's a very sly moment in the film towards the end when John is about to go to Hamburg yeah. to record with the Beatles. When John says to Aunt Mimi, "I have a new band now. Would you yeah. like to know its name?" And Mimi says, "No." So he yeah. doesn't even get to hear. Yeah. We don't even get to hear the words The Beatles, which I thought was very clever. I think this would be a really good double feature with Backbeat. If you remember Backbeat? Backbeat's good. Backbeat's a really good movie. Story of Stuart Sutcliffe, who was one of the two lost Beatles, you know, the two that we never hear about. Uh, Backbeat's a really, really good film, a much better film than this is. But I do think that together it makes an interesting double feature, and you learn a lot about that period of time, about these particular characters, because Stuart Sutcliffe is like, in this film, I think, as a background character for maybe 18 seconds. You hear his name, we're going to Stuart's apartment to rehearse or something. You know, that, that's as much as he's present in this film. So there is an interesting linkage between the two. But I would recommend that people see this. Just don't expect something brilliant. It is, it is interesting, like you said, probably basically because it's about John Lennon. But that being said, I, um, I, I, I still struggle with the casting a little bit. Well, Aaron Johnson, who plays John Lennon, he's the kid yeah. from Kick-Ass, and he's Brit He's in real life. He is he's, British. He's he is British. British, which I didn't realize when we saw Kick-Ass. But, but you know, it's there are scenes in here where, when he has, say, a, a short sleeve shirt on, or when he's, you know, when when you see him, sort of, he's he's buff. And John Lennon was not buff. And there's, it was hard for me to get past the idea that this guy, I get it, he's a ladies' man, he's into the girls, and the girls are loving him, and he's get, you know. Sure, that, that part of John, but John Lennon was not an athlete, and this kid is very, very athletic. Well, it's funny, because... Uh, that may be unfair, but it, it, it made it very hard to sort of buy him as John Lennon, no matter how good the performance was. Well, you know, and then we'll, 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 we'll move on to an early review of Red, ladies and gentlemen, but first, let me just say that yeah. when, when the film was done, I, I, I thought to myself, should Aaron Johnson play it as if he's John Lennon, or should he play it as if he's the kid in the story, regardless of being John Lennon? He's a kid in the story. I almost feel like you have the burden to be John Lennon. You have the burden of that character, whereas if you just play it True. as this 15-year-old kid who has this crisis, I think he might have been better off. And it reminds me a little bit, not to get overly nerdy here, but when... <clears throat> Wait, overly nerdy? I know. Whenever. When does that happen? Let me check my watch when, 10 seconds ago. When Richard Attenborough was directing Denzel Washington in uh, Cry Freedom, playing Stephen Biko, um, he, inte he specifically told him, he says, don't act heroic. Don't play the hero. He says, we'll make you look heroic. Just play the guy. And that's a really difficult thing for a lot of actors to do when they are very aware of the historic import of the person they're playing. They walk in thinking, okay, this person comes with a lot of baggage, therefore I have to inflate myself to fill the measure of their greatness. And you don't really. The filmmaker can do that, but you, you want that character to be honest. John, John Lennon never woke up and said, today I'm going to be John Lennon. He's, he, just, he was himself every day, and it's, it's our perception, it's the way the world kind of interfaces with that person that creates the perception of greatness. Okay, so we, we mildly disagree on Nowhere Boy. I, I, I like it, I don't love it. 
Okay, I, you know what? Actually, I think we agree. I like it. I don't love it. Yeah. Look at that. It's unbelievable. We're good. Wow. We're good. No wonder we're a team. We're good. <clears throat> I'm. Oh. I, are you Laverne or Shirley? You took it there. Squiggy. <laughs> squiggy. <laughs> are you had it in your combs. You you Corey wants to know who's had it in your combs. Couldn't say Paul and John. No. Coming right off that. No. No. Seventieth birthday, by the way, this weekend. John yeah. Would have been seventy. And that's why the film. Uh, that's why released. the film is re being released now. Yeah. Yep. yep. But, he is? Why would you Why would you even? Uh, too soon? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, last film. Now, uh, we're not doing a show next, uh, next week. And there's a reason why. Uh, that, uh, yeah, exactly, really. Hold your applause. There's a reason why we're not doing a show next week. Because I want to eat free food. That's really the reason why we're not doing a show next week. We had free week. food tonight from New Tech. We did. Philip uh, Nelson, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so uh, I just want to say. We're not doing a show next week because next week there's a big uh, DreamWorks party. This is the time of the year where Wade and myself, as members of the LA Film Critics Association, we are starting to get our butts kissed with free food. And so next Thursday, Ooh, there's so a so DreamWorks. It seemed like you wanted us to applaud that. You were like, free food. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's okay. not free food for no, them. Here's the no, 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 wait, wait. Yeah, here's we're not going. <laughs> here's, here's the thing. They don't applaud. They, they pretend they don't care. But if I invited them, they'd be all over that stuff. But here's the oh thing. My if God. we don't do a show, I save money because I don't have to pay for food, but then they don't get free food. So actually, because you're getting free food, food the crew mouth. doesn't get free food. <laughs> okay, you oh. know what, here's what I'll do. I'm gonna go around the buffet line and stuff food in my pockets, come back here, we'll do a show, and I will give them the disgusting, coagulated, dripping, greasy food that's been in my pocket for two hours, and the staff can eat that. I'm not sure how this is the review. Coagulated, greasy waiting. food. <laughs> what? Or are we going, or isn't there another movie to review? I, I, I believe there is. Yeah, can we get to yeah. the last movie that people are waiting for that we're going to do earlier? Go ahead, you explain. Go okay. for it. So here's the thing. Since we're not doing a show uh, mm -hmm. next week, uh, we will give you an early review of Red. Woo! Ooh, we're ahead of the curve. Not to be confused with Krzysztof Kieślowski's great film from 19... 19... 94. Well, of course, yeah. everybody was thinking Well, I, okay, okay. In Wade's defense, Kozlowski's Three Colors trilogy, yeah. three masterpieces, the Absolutely. end. Absolutely. And Corey has that. But this red, right on, is, this red is based on the uh, graphic novel, which, by the way, is mandated by law now. Every third film has to be a graphic novel, or else uh, <laughs> someone gets punished. That's how it works. So uh, in, in the movie, Bruce Willis plays a retired CIA black ops super spy, and he is bored, and he's lonely in his retired life, but he's, uh, his life gets a kick in the pants when he winds up being ambushed by these masked assassins. Why is Bruce Willis being attacked? Who is Bruce Willis uh, being attacked by? He's got to find out, so he goes on the run, and he meets up with three other retired CIA assassins, played by Morgan Freeman, Helen Mirren, and John Malkovich. So that is the setup. Now let's look at a clip. Wow, all we need is a banjo. Keep your voice down. Don't make any sudden moves. Just stay close to me. Don't use your cell phone. I uh, took my cell Talk phone. about cell phones. Don't talk about satellites. Seriously? Why are you trying to kill me? Why would I be trying to kill you? Because the last time we met, I tried to kill you. That was a long time ago. Some people hold on to things like that. I'm not trying to kill you. Okay? So that makes us friends, right? Right. Good. Want to take that knife out? Now, all I have to say is this. At this moment, Red has gotten 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, wait, that's not true. I didn't like it. <laughs> so, if you go to Rotten Tomatoes, you'll read one negative review oh, wow. and about really 12 agree. positive... <laughs> yes, go there right now. One negative review and 12 <laughs> positive reviews because I just don't get it. Here's the situation. Uh, oh, that's awesome. I found the are film... You like, wait, are you like the guy at the Baseball Hall of Fame who, like, one guy's got to not vote for Babe Ruth because nobody should get 100%? No, 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 no. No, <laughs> here, no here's the thing. Because that happened. No, because uh, Wade and I are writers for Box Office Magazine, so when we write uh, our reviews, we don't know what other people think. We write the review, we file it, whatever, come, whatever comes with May. So I go on the red page to, uh, to enter, because on Rotten Tomatoes, you could, critics can enter their own uh, blurbs. That's how they're entered. Uh, I went to enter my blurb for Red, and I saw, oh look, it has 100%. Not for long. <laughs> so here's my issue with the film. My, my, my issue with the film is that in a film that was a little more clever, these characters, including a 73-year-old man, would use their age disadvantage to their advantage. 
They're much more well trained. They have a, they have decades worth of knowledge on how things really work back in the old school. But really, it's not like that. The, the the script is just not that clever. It was written by the same guys who wrote Whiteout, which is another graphic novel, and they also wrote the two brothers. They also wrote the What the F adaptation of Battleship. So when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to screenwriters, you've got Battleship, you've got Whiteout, and of course you've got Red. So really, the movie is is it would be it would take too much work and be too clever for them to figure out ways for these older uh, CIA spies to get out of these various scrapes. So what they do is they basically give them guns and give them a knife and they all start shooting it out and of course they hedge their bets even more with Bruce Willis who still, you know, he, who never really acknowledges how old he is or maybe with a wink and a nod and, 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 and a forearm to the face. So really it's trying to hedge its bets. You know, when you look at movies like you know, Space Cowboys, the Clint Eastwood film from 2000, or even Going in Style, which is a great 1979 comedy with uh, Martin Bress, where you get these 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 older people who they are old. They don't they're they're old. They embrace it. They use what's old about them for comedy and to get out of various scrapes. Red isn't like that. I found it completely completely pedantic. And in fact, I really maintain if you change about 10 pages of this script. It could have been anybody. It could have been any four people getting together. And what annoyed me more is that as the story gets bigger and bigger, and as, as this team of four, they uncover this conspiracy, as the, big, the, more, the bigger the story gets and it starts to loop in the vice president of the United States, so now you're just getting completely ridiculous, and the movie is losing sight of what it should be caring about, which is the characters and the comedy. So in the end, uh, yes, I guess it's completely acceptably fine, but you know what? It should have been much better than that. It was, it's just totally pedestrian. What if, what if they had looped in Katherine Heigl? <laughs> Does she die at the end? Yes. <laughs> I'm on board. Okay. It has an 88% now, according to uh, somebody in the chat room. Uh, you, here's so why it has. It down from 100. Here's why it has an 88%. Me. That's it. <laughs> Everybody liked it, but me. And you know what? I stand behind it. I'm sorry. You know, don't totally apologize. Sorry. You got to do what you yeah. got to do. And it was directed by this guy, uh, um, what's his name, uh, uh, Robert Schwenke, who did Flight Plan, and he did The Time Traveler's Wife. Oh. So he, as a director, Ow. he doesn't give you a whole lot. So really, you know, uh, it's funny because th this this summer is a bad summer for team movies. Mm -hmm. A team, terrible. Expendables, good. Yes, but but Red, not good. Yeah. So I was disappointed by Red. You know what? There was and, also and that other one. There was another team movie in there that came out the week after the the losers. The losers. The the good call, which of yeah. course was uh, was also not good. Yeah. You know, and look, if Morgan Freeman, Helen Mirren, John Malkovich, and by the way, John Malkovich, funny, funniest thing about the film, no doubt about it. He plays the whacked out guy who was uh, experimented on. Playing in the a whacked out, and that's all he does. He was experimented on in the '60s, and now he's crazy, and he's funny, but. You know, it's okay if, if, if Morgan Freeman, Helen Mirren, and John Malkovich want to have a good time. That's fine. You know what? They all want to work together. They all want to do something funny and frivolous. But why do this? There's so many more clever ways to approach this story. And the graphic novel was a lot better, a lot darker. I don't blame them for not wanting to go that dark. That's fine. But you, there's no reason why you have to get dumber. It's okay not to get darker, but please don't get dumber. And I just feel like, again, the movie is so pedestrian. Could have been a lot better. Uh, I do not dig it. Check Rotten Tomatoes, because I'm telling you, I will not be the only negative review. Although I like to be, because it'd be cool. I like that. <laughs> Leah says the folks from Expendables, Losers, Red, and the A-Team should get together for a battle royale. Oh, no, no, you know. Put them all together and battle out to the death. Uh, let's, just, let's just leave Battle Royale Well, the I don't movie. think he meant the movie. <laughs> yeah, but you know, when you use the word Battle Royale, that's like a sacred buy it, phrase. Buy it, buy it, buy <laughs> it. Yes, that's a great movie, but that's Battle Royale that's what is meant. sacred to me. Loud. We talked about this. <laughs> J. Mac, you're, you're, you're confusing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, there he goes. Yes! He's, Thank he's you. Really Don't confused. Encourage him. Don't encourage him. All right, folks, so that's this weekend in movies. There it is. I Are, guess you know what time it is. Well, okay, hang on a second. Yeah. Before we talk about what time it is, Wade, here's the thing. Wade uh, uh, comes into the, uh, uh, the Screaming Garage kitchen where Philip Nelson from Parental Guides will be here in a sec. He got everybody beer and pizza. So Wade comes in, by the way, thank you, Philip. Yeah. Wade comes in and says, do you really think that they'll move the Oscars to uh, January? Well, Tom Sherak, who's president of the Academy right now, wants to do that because we live in a short attention span society where it's instant gratification. We want everybody to give us more, 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 now, now, now. See, there's a difference between a short attention span society and the it's idea insane. that the Oscars are boring. 
you look, know. Look, the, the Oscars worked better at the end of March than they did at the end of February. They should move it to the end of March. They should extend the Oscar season again so that the little movies have time to breathe and gain an audience. You know, that makes more sense to me. This, letting 16-year-olds determine how fast we pace our society is not a good idea. I, uh, I, I, wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly disagree. Oh, wait a minute. Chad, I know you, Chad. Okay. Chad's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, Chad later, everybody. Come on. Okay, Ch Chad, it's not all about you. Oh, yes, it, it is. It is about me. <laughs> it's always about me. <laughs> Well, okay, here's the thing. We talked about the Academy theme because we know that you have three stories that are even better. We wanted to hit the I Academy. I do. You do. L uh, let's, see, let's hear the first one. Well, before I get to the news, I just want to say that there's a new episode of Chad Vader, Day Shift Manager, that just came out today. Woo! Woo! That's right. It's exciting. There's a duel to the death in it. So, that's a plug for my thing, and now I'll get to the news. Duel to death. Now, battle number one. Zack Snyder will direct the upcoming Superman reboot, not Darren Aronofsky, as this reporter erroneously reported last week. I got some bad intel, man. <laughs> Snyder, as everyone knows, has directed big-budget comic book adaptations in the past, such as 300 and Watchmen, so this might be a good fit for him. However, his most recent film, The Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gay Hole, <laughs> I think it's pronounced Gay Hole. Anyway, that movie flopped. So this whole Superman reboot might turn out to be a big turd like the last one. I tried to reach Zack Snyder for comment. Quietly, I approached his big house, my tape recorder in hand, ready to get an exclusive interview. Suddenly, I tripped an alarm and was attacked by his flock of trained owls. They swooped down on me. They tried to get inside my, my helmet and my suit. I barely escaped with my life. Wow. That's a pretty typical Tuesday in the life of Chad Vader. That's the way I look at it. Okay, right. so here's the thing. I, uh, okay, uh, Wade, um, I'm, very, I'm very disappointed in Warner Brothers, who has been smarter than that through they the had, whole superhero run, they had a and handful, Christopher Nolan. They had a handful of people that, they were, that, that were on the short list, allegedly. And there were two on there, I think we talked about this, that just didn't belong there, and that was Zack Snyder and Tony Scott. D horrible, w awful choices. Matt Reeves would have been a great choice. Uh, Duncan, Duncan Jones, Jones would have been a great choice. Aronofsky would have been a really interesting choice. Any of those three, I would have been happy with. The other two, not. And of the other two, the one I would have been least happy with is Zack Snyder. They went with the worst. Why? I, I don't know. I and I don't think Christopher Nolan has as much say in all of this as everyone is pretending that he does. Well, the thing is, is that it, it's all about the script. You know, the script yeah. is a David Goyer script. Yeah. He's kind of hit and miss. You know, people tell stories about how much he really contributed to the Batman films. Yes, and Goyer wor Goyer works well with others, not necessarily on his own. Now, I really liked Blade Trinity a lot, and I, I like Goyer when he's in a groove. But you know, it's kind of hit and miss, like you said. the The thing with this is that Zack Snyder has, frankly, never really made a good film. I mean, if you want to credit him with, you know, improving on what George Romero did, all he really did was imitate what George Romero did, okay? There's nothing original there. 300 is a crap film, Watchmen is a crap film, and The Owls of Gay Hole is a horrible <laughs> film. So, uh, I mean, he really is all style over substance, and I just don't know, I don't see what he's going to bring to this. That's, that, that's the thing. I'm very surprised that Warner Brothers would give it to a guy who is all effects. All he cares about is yeah. the effects. You know what's going to happen some, you know what's going to happen about 16 times in the Superman film? Hmm. What will happen is the villain will come up to Superman, right? And he'll take his fist, and there'll be like this fast motion effect, and the fist will go into Superman's face, and, and then it'll Superman, stop. And, it'll stop. Yeah. and then Superman will recoil in slow motion and then speed up. Yeah. Because that's what Zack Snyder does. That's his move. That's what people, he does. Yeah, people were very opposed to this. We never had more comments on a Facebook uh, post. We post this on Facebook. Go to our Facebook page, and you can comment on things and talk to the guys who comment back. And I think Dane, Dean Mason uh, said it best. It's gonna be, it was very close to what you said. Huge amounts of blood spraying all over the screen, slow motion. some point, Superman is going to bang the S out of Lois Lane, also in slow motion. Um, <laughs> and oh, by the way, the whole thing will be retrofitted for 3D. Giddily clapping, ooh, I can't wait. <laughs> Which is pretty much I sums mean, it up. Everybody says the same thing terrible. as soon as they saw that Zack Snyder was going to direct this. That is true. Now, by the Bad way, all, that, all I care about now is whether we're boring Chad Vader. Chad. Every once in a while, i got to mm. look in the monitor to see if Chad's falling asleep. He always winds up falling I'm, asleep. I'm, 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 I'm okay. Okay, I'm good. Okay. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> all, right, if, 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 all right, he's hanging in there. All right, so what's, uh, what's the second story? In New Zealand, 
The set of The Hobbit has burned to the ground. Reports say it took 50 firefighters nearly three hours to quell the blaze. Hopefully this will not be too much of a setback for the already troubled production. Some say that this might be a case of arson since there have been conflicts with actors unions, but I believe this fire was caused by none other than Sauron, the Dark Lord of Mordor. <laughs> I believe the forces of Mordor set this blaze. The orcs and the the babe that Nazgul and Sauron and Mordor. <laughs> Sorry, guys, that's probably not true, but I just like saying Mordor. <laughs> come on, come on, say it with me. Mordor. Mordor. Come on, you know, come on Wade. Uh, do it, Wade. I'm not going there. No. Oh, it's all right. But don't Wade. you. Th okay, Mordor. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, he put his heart into that. But don't, don't you find it a weird crossing of the streams when, like, Chad Vader talks about Lord of the Rings? It's a yeah, very it's, strange it's, crossing it, of the streams. It feels, like, uh, it feels like something would happen to a convention. That is true. Yeah. So, all it right. Uh, Believe me, it did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, look, I don't know what's happening down there in Australia, but you know what? I don't really care. Because the, the movie's going to cost half a billion dollars what, for the it, three films. And, and you know what? When they say the set, it's, it's, this isn't like a sitcom. <laughs> there, there, there are probably 370 sets. The one that burned down was maybe, what, like a tree? They're going to shoot two scenes there? I don't know. It, it, I find it very hard to, to get really riled up about. But, the, you know, also the stuff with the actors union down there was, a, I think that's a bit of a, a publicity stunt as well. So, yeah, the, the thing that's sort of more interesting to me is, is that uh, Peter Jackson's taken over again and with some minor enthusiasm, I guess. I would imagine that if, if you want to keep the fanboys happy yeah. and you want to give it to one of the only people on the planet, there's maybe two people in the world who have that kind of experience yeah. making that kind of a movie, you got to give it to Peter Jackson and you know that guy is get, literally they're, they're going to hand him Australia. But that's how much they're going to pay him to do that film. Didn't we really want to see what Del Toro? Uh, did? New Zealand. Did, New Zealand. Didn't we? Didn't we all they, really? By the way, they could hand him Australia anyway. Yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. joke works. <laughs> but didn't we? Is that didn't. A Superman two reference? No. Oh, no, Gene Hackman wanted to buy Australia. It's not that. Not that deep. <laughs> but w didn't we all want to see Del Toro do this? I mean, yeah. didn't we really want to see Del Toro, see him, like, kind of bring something different? Now it's going to feel like, oh, great, you know, Peter Jackson is doing Lord of the Rings again. More Lord of the Rings. I spent, I spent, like, I spent a decade watching him do that, and now here we start all over again. It's like Del Toro would have brought something different and new and fresh, and I wanted to see that, so I kind of feel gypped. Z uh, Chad, Chad, are you bored? Where is he? There he is. Oh, I'm good. Good. I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> what, else, what else do we have, Chad? Director John McTiernan just got the green light on a new project, A Year in Prison. <laughs> He's been convicted of lying in the Anthony Pelicano wiretapping and racketeering case, where McTiernan got Pelicano to tap the phone of producer Chuck Roven during production of 2002's Rollerball. <laughs> I tried to reach McTiernan for comment and had about as much luck as I had with Zack Snyder. <laughs> Couldn't get a hold of him. So I called my friend Tony, and he's gonna put this hidden device on John McTiernan's phone so I can listen to his calls. It's like a tape recorder, I guess, for, for calls. I'm sure I'll get lots of juicy quotes since he won't even know that I'm listening. Very excited. Don't tell anybody, though. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Uh, forget I said anything. <laughs> yeah, does, um... Does it bother anybody that all of this is about rollerball? I mean, seriously, <laughs> if you're gonna go through all this trouble and go to jail and get sued 16 times and waste all the state's money, pop, whatever it is, make it a good movie. Yeah. This is all over rollerball. I know. It's like the biggest piece of crap in the world. Well, I, Chuck Roven, of course, who produced the Batman films, uh, is a major producer. Rollerball is probably the least interesting film on his resume. And, and, and for Mc John McTiernan, I mean, you know, die, die hard. hard. Come on. You know, I mean, these are, these are relatively major players. Yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> McTiernan will be out in like six months or three months, and uh, he'll get his career on track again. So what does he do? I guarantee you so this will help him get his career up and running. You think? Yeah, absolutely. Well, because the thing is that, look, you know, you know, when you make a film, the actors and all the major players, they have to be insured. Yeah. So if it was something like maybe drugs, or something where they felt like he was sort yeah. of uninsurable, then maybe you know they were afraid he would you know shoot up and not make it to set, and they would, it would cost no, a bunch of money. He's, it's he's, just some guy that wiretaps someone. He's just I'm doing it now. It Wade's house wiretapping. Who can't what? <laughs> 
Now, he's perfectly uh, functional. He can still direct movies. He's done some very, very good films. I mean, he, you know, he directed uh, the original Predator as well. Which is a good movie. It's a very good movie. He, you know what? Uh, uh, McTiernan, a good action director. Yeah. A very bad wiretapper, but a good yep. action director. Absolutely. All right, Chad, uh, is, is that it? Anything else? My final thought on McTiernan. If they really want to punish him, they won't send him to jail. They'll send him to Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> Chad right, Vader, everybody. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chad. All right, so there you go. So Wade, uh, uh, okay, Mike, do us a favor. Put it on your iPhone. Uh, early October 2013, give Chuck, uh, give uh, uh, McTiernan a call. Huh? Yeah. Celebrity what? try this at home with okay. McTiernan after he sure. gets out of jail. When he's out? Huh? All right. After he's out. Yeah. Um, it's something to what think about. What movie would he pick? Huh? What movie would he pick? Stir Crazy? Oh! oh. Boom! <laughs> with the wacky and the funny. Look at that. Shawshank. Speaking of, oh, look at that. I can't Not so that. wacky and funny. Not so wacky and funny. Okay. Blues Brothers? Oh! Whoa. Escape from Alcatraz? Whoa! Hey. Papillon. Papillon. Oh, Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, speaking of wacky and funny, it's time for parental guidance! <laughs> now, normally, you're in the monitor. I, was, I didn't realize you had a body. I thought maybe you, you were like, so like this Futurama head. It's like Max Headroom. Yeah. yeah. You're like Max Headroom. Now, wh why, now, here's the thing. Why are you here? Why are you in Los Angeles? Get the hell out of here. I know. It's, I'm just here helping. Uh, I'm actually working with a guy named Brian Ray to help him webcast his uh, album launch tomorrow. Very cool. So, yeah, he's Paul McCartney's guitar player. See, so he's a, a hack. It's, 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 he's, he's legit. <laughs> okay. It's a, it's a, no. But it's, it's that tough Beatles crowd thing. here. It's, it's tough, that Beatles yes. thing. I was going to say that, but I, I'm glad you did. <laughs> so, okay, so a uh, uh, quick plug. So where, where, where can we uh, see this? Uh, you can actually see it on brianray.com. So, or Ustream.com, Ustream.tv slash Brian dash Ray. Is that so Brian with a Y or Ray with a Y? You're, you're confusing me. I'm sorry. B R I A N R A Y. There we Got go. Got it. There it is. Shameless plug. That's all right. You know what? You earned it. So, um, you earned it because you are the vice president, the king, the CEO, the CFO, the COO of New Tech. This okay. show would not be what it is without New Tech. Let's New Tech it up, folks. Come on. J Mac, hold up the new tech, hold up the thing, make it go up and down, and let's let everyone. You know what? Don't start giving orders now. Oh, it's a tough crowd. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Philip's here. He, they do it every week that Philip is not here, and it's his company. Seems like we're kissing out. Well, we are. All right. The show's fa the but Phil's here for a reason. Can we oh, get to his segment? You're oh, chapping your lips on the wrong butt. That's all I have to say. Exactly. Phil is here for a reason. It's, it has nothing to do with new tech. It has nothing to do with TriCaster. It has to do with his own love of movies and his litter of children. Go ahead, introduce it. You were taking it, so I'm going to take it away. Go ahead, Mark. Mark's not happy. I'm not happy right now. <laughs> Wade, say something. Uh, uh, could we get Mark some medication? <laughs> okay, so Philip Nelson, you are parental guidance. Right, you are the one who comes on the show and you, uh, you recommend a great movie that kids can watch, good for the whole family. And the reason you can do that is because you have 1,605 kids. <laughs> 1,606, actually. Really? Yeah. During the show, one. everybody! Last week, I added another, yes. Well done. That's like, it's great. Uh, okay, so you, have, no, sorry, so you have four kids. Yes, I have four kids. And, uh, you know, they're 11. I have a son that's 11 and three daughters that are eight, six, and one. So, you know, we have a range of, 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 of tastes in movies in my house. But no, My Little Pony, as we discussed last week, it's <laughs> Thank banned. You. Thank God. Now, because the thing is that when you now it, it is an age range, so when it's uh, when it's a movie rental night, you sort of have to tailor it for everybody. It can't be too adult or it can't be too kid like. You, you know, know it, it's funny. We actually sometimes the youngest one we might uh, shift time of movie night to a little later, so she can go to bed, and if it's something that's a little scarier that she might not like. But my kids, they, they love movies, and they would like to do a movie night every night. And we have a, an insane DVD collection, and um, it's, it's actually a lot of fun. And, you know, it's funny, um, as we always say, you know, the idea of a, a family movie is one that you can actually watch with everyone, not just a, a, a cheesy movie you put on and go wash dishes while the kids watch. And this week, we've actually picked one. I didn't pick it. My son picked it, and he's asked me since I started doing this segment to do this movie. Mm -hmm. It's one of his favorites. So uh, his, uh, the movie is actually Alex Ryder, Operation Stormbreaker. And uh, this movie is basically uh, Mission Impossible or James Bond for kids. 
you know, it's very appropriate. Um, you know, it's it's got a lot of action, it's got a lot of excitement, um, but it is a very appropriate movie for all ages. So let's go through our reviews. So in the action category, we're gonna give it a five. In this movie, there's action from start to finish. Um, and I notice a recurring theme, I do a lot of action movies because it seems that's what my kids wanna watch. But this is a five, it's the highest action rating that you can get. Um, in the romance category, we're gonna give it a four. There's not really any true romance, but there's some innuendo. And once again, we just want parents to be informed. So Alicia Silverstone's in it and she's cute and she's the guardian, she's like the housekeeper for this 14 year old boy. And you know, little, little uh, interesting um, looks. But it's really nothing uh, controversial, but I'm gonna give that a four. In the language category, I'm gonna give it a two. I really don't remember any bad language in this movie, but I'm sure there might be one word, so I'm gonna give it a two. Now in peril, this is the one where I want parents to really understand. Um, this movie has a lot of perilous you know, situations. Um, it, the movie starts out, Alex Ryder lives with his uncle. His uncle's trained him from birth to be an action junkie. You know, extreme sports, bungee jumping, skydiving, karate. And in the first few minutes of the movie, his uncle is killed and assassinated by this Russian assassin. And so, you know, there's a lot of peril. I mean, there's death in the movie. There's villains that are thrown into a tank with a Portuguese man of war. And so it is a very perilous movie, so we're gonna give it a five there. Now in the adult enjoyment, I'm gonna give it a four. Um, this movie, the first time we watched it, my son begged me to watch it with him. And my dad was with me, and my dad is, you know, he's a, not totally old school, but slightly old school. And he watched it with us, and he actually wanted the movie. He actually wanted to get, he said, this is a great movie, I love it. So it is a really good family film. Um, it's not, most people watching this show probably have never heard of it. And, uh, you know, so I'm saying go rent it, check it out, and I think your kids will enjoy it. All right, give, give us the name one more time. Cool. Alex Ryder. Operation Stormbreaker. And one of the neat things about this movie is that it does have a lot of stars in it. It's not a bunch of cheesy actors. It's got I I Ian McGregor, or however you pronounce his name. Ewan. Ewan McGregor. Yeah. It's got Mickey Rourke as the villain. And who's the guy from Harry Potter that's the Prime Minister? Oh, Robbie Coltrane. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's got, real, it's got good actors in this movie, and it's a lot of fun. It really is. So there you go. So, uh, so that's a good recommendation. Now I have a question for you. Okay. Have you ever rented a film for the family? Put in the DVD, you play it, five minutes in, somebody gets their head chopped off. You're like, oh my God, why did I rent this? I actually haven't. I, I, you know, as a parent, <laughs> uh, no, as a parent, I actually pretty much pre-screen everything. You know, the, I don't, I don't want to just chance terrifying scenes to my kids. So, you know, that's why I like doing this segment because, you know, we can educate some parents about some interesting shows that they may not have seen and then they can make the decision whether their kids get to see so, it. But I do pre-screen just So when my parents took me to see Patton when I was five, bad move? Well, I, when I was in the fourth grade, my great-grandmother let me watch Friday the 13th. Awesome, okay? now that's exciting. Yeah. So, you know, she's from that generation, yeah. born in the Great Depression, see. all movies are appropriate, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so we're watching Friday the 13th and I, I was scared of the woods until like last year. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh. I really was. I didn't get to enjoy camping growing up because of that movie, it really traumatized me. So, you know, we I have actually one movie that actually was a little extreme for my, my six-year-old, and y'all are gonna be kind of shocked that I let him watch it, was Mars Attacks. Oh, that's cool. I that's love like Mars Attacks. No, they love it. it. They actually Look. love it, and after she saw it once, now they want to watch it all the time. And they should. Right. Any movie with Tom Jones should be seen <laughs> all the time. See, all now, the time. My parents took me when I was five to see Jaws. Because nice. we, we were at the Cape and saw it being filmed. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And they're like, hey, that's the, that's the thing we saw being filmed over the summer. Let's go. And yeah, that was, didn't sleep, thought there was a shark nice. under my bed for about six, seven years. Awesome. 35 years. Yeah. All right, here's my recommendation. I, I, I have a recommendation. It's a great film that I think you should see. It's about, it's, uh, it's not Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, but it's kind of like spun off from that. It's called Seven. Seven. Morgan Freeman and Brad yeah. Pitt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, good, clean family fun. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it's it great. It's fantastic. Good. They actually do love that one. That one's right there next to uh, yeah. all the Miyazaki films, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Audition library. and uh, yeah. Gozu is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so great recommendation, as Thank always, you. right? Whether you're here, whether you're there, it doesn't matter. It's a great recommendation. Thank you. Well, you know, one thing I'd like from the people that are watching online and that are watching on demand, I'd like your feedback. If you rent one of these movies and you hated it, I would actually like to know, um, because everybody has different opinions and every parent has different hot button topics 
that they want or don't want their kids to see or be exposed to. So I would like some feedback. You know, we had some great feedback on my mistake of yeah. calling Hayao Miyazaki the director of The Cat Returns. He was a producer. You know, he, he was involved, but um, company. thanks for busting my chops. I do appreciate it. But, you know, give us feedback. And if there's movies that you think we should recommend, I'll watch them and maybe we'll recommend them. So please give us feedback. Awesome. It's all part of parental guidance, folks. Parental guidance. <laughs> Philip Nelson, well done. Now, um, and back. Awesome. <laughs> all right, so uh, um, are you going to uh, stay with us for Buy, Rent, to Burn? Don't cue the, don't cue the graphic. Right, okay. Are you going to stay with us for Buy, Rent, to Burn? If you don't kick me out, I'll be the, the, yes. the schmuck on the street. You know, the, the actually average viewer, because I'm, I don't really know movies like you guys oh, do. No. So go say it. Say it loud. Say it proud. What are we doing now? Buy, rent, or burn. Yeah! Okay. All right, so here we go. Mike, uh, tell the folks at home how it works. How it works is, now hold this up and it keeps blocking my light. I noticed last week I get dark and light. Right? Yeah, you do. Weird, right? Um, they, they, on the chat room right now, we say, hey, what movies are you thinking of spending money on? And then Mark and Wade, and now Philip, will tell you whether you should buy, rent, or burn it. Okay. And by burn it, we mean throw in the fire. Yep. Okay, starting, and this is all chat room today. Uh, Tejas 74, That's Life. Uh, burn. <laughs> I'm gonna say that, I'm gonna say burn. Yeah. Sing the song. Yeah. That's life. That's right. No, but the, the, it's just not a, it's not a good movie. I agree, I would, I, I'd burn that. I agree. I'm on board. Sorry. I'm on board wow, with the burning. Really just well, boring. you know, I thought I thought this was rapid. Mike always exciting. complains that this Lynn doesn't Dio. go fast enough. The, I don't know what this says. Dunwich Horror. Dunwich Horror. Is that what it says? Dunwich Horror? From Lady Diana? So far, I haven't heard of either of these movies. Boy. <laughs> I don't think anybody's heard of I, Dunwich Horror. Can, can I get a I, I've director heard of it, I've heard of it, but I'm not sure that I've ever even seen it. 60s Bam. Looking for a director here. Yeah, let's, let's come back to it. Is it, is it a hammer? Frieza is it a 57 hammer wants to know about The Shape of Things. We'll come back to it when they answer. The Shape of Things, Frieza 57. Uh, yeah, I'd rent that. Uh, I, you know what? Uh, oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's a pretty rent. It's film. worth a rent. It's yeah. okay. It's fine. Yeah, all right, rapid fire. I'm looking through all these. I've never heard a single one of these movies right now. I haven't heard of any I'm, of them. No, either. no, it's going to keep going. Do we? What was it, Dunwich Horror? Dunwich Horror, 1970. Sandra 1970? Dean, Dean Stockwell, Sandra Dean. Oh. Oh, 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 gosh. Okay, 70s horror. The, you know what? I'm going to say rent. 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 I'm going to say rent. Anything with Sandra D. I'm going to stop film? there. All right. Sandra From D. Skillos wants to know about Spirited Away. Oh. Bye. Go. You know, I actually, it's probably my least favorite Miyazaki film, but really? I would definitely buy it. I would oh. buy it, but it's, it's not my favorite. Bye. Everybody talks about how great it is, but there's so many better ones. You know that no one's ever heard. Well, of. it's the one sure. that broke through here. It's true. You know, he had made so many others prior to that, but that's the one that Disney picked up, threw the money behind it. They thought they could market it, and people discovered him with it. And uh, yeah, he has, he has made better. You guys things, all give your thing. Mark bye, 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 bye. Buy it bye. for sure. Mark, give a bye. Great. From uh, Jester ninety four, a scanner darkly. No, you know what? That link later stuff with it, the whole with the weird crazy animation thing. Thingies. Burn no. it, burn whatever, uh, burn whatever, 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 whatever computer he uses to create that effect. Burn that too. Yeah, that, that's okay. It's, no, Meanwhile, Tejo seventy four in the chat room is having a fit. Blake Edwards, really? WTF about that's life? That how dare you? Apparently, because well, Blake, Blake Edwards. Edwards film. Not every Blake Edwards no, film is great. Look, Blake Blake Edwards stopped being Blake Edwards around about like nineteen ninety two. And it was what was a fine mess. A fine a mess. Fine maybe. mess. It, it's it. Everything started to unravel when he. What was the John Ritter film with the with the uh, the, the glow in the dark condom? Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, what was that called? That that was when it all just completely blew mm. apart. I mean, but, and, okay. and, and and even until then he was. Spotty. We introduced Tao right. seventy four. Calm down. And going to the next one. Hushed five. The good, the bad, and the weird. Oh, the good oh I like that movie. <laughs> That's a good movie. It is. Uh, I don't know if I say buy. I'd go rent with it. It's you can I, I you can stream that on net. Actually, you can stream Wait. that on Netflix, which I did. Yeah. Uh, actually, relatively recently, it's good. I would definitely rent. It's that. a weird. Oh, okay. uh, what is it? Singapore. Are you saying buy or rent, or are you saying rent? rent I'm going to say rent. Is it rent. Singapore or Thai? Disagree. I believe it's uh, Singapore. <laughs> I believe it's Singapore. <laughs> Vietnamese. It's, it's a weird. Meme. It's a weird Asian fusion right. film. Uh, Meanwhile, uh, Philip, do you have a, would you have one? Because let's name one that you might be interested. You know what? In because these people are asking. I have not. I've you. heard of Spirited Away. You All know. Right. Now, if they're <laughs> asking about, I spit on your grave or something like that. I spit on your grave. Buy rent. I spit on your grave. Remake opening this week. Remake. That's right. Buy rent or burn the original. I die. You know what? Yeah. Uh, if you are a woman looking for 
creative ways to torture men. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I, I really think that, that that movie to me is just exploitation in the guise of like being some feminist revenge flick. I, I still think it's about a girl who gets raped with an inch of her life because isn't that fun to watch? Let's show more of that. And then she winds up, you know, beating up these guys. You know, I, I'd burn that. I'd burn that. You know, huh? Yeah, I, 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 you know I'd what? burn the grave. One of these days, <laughs> you're going to have a date and she's going to love that movie. What are you going to tell her then? I like how Wade says, one of these days you're going to have a date. <laughs> it could have stopped right there, but he kept going. Jesus Christ. Okay, we, we confused J-Mac. Poor J-Mac. Okay. He has a list that I give him, and now he, he has a TriCaster. Are you ready? We caught up? Okay, let's yeah, go. Yeah, we're good. All right. All right, let's go. <laughs> Doesn't we are back to, think for us? We are back to the list. MJ2346 asks about funny games. Burn. The original or the, the remake? Re yeah, yeah. Well, the ori well, yeah. The no, the, the, the I uh, buy, no, rent the original. Burn the remake. Can I ask, are these people really wondering about these movies? Are they trying to stop? I, well, I think they're Googling yeah, movies. Yeah, they're just naming stuff. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, let, no, let, let me put it this way. Funny yeah. Games is, is right. done by one of the great, right. world's great directors. Michael right. Haneke. Michael Haneke is one of the world's um, great directors. Here's what I want to say right about now. Michael Haneke. The, the original Funny Games, Burn. The remake, Burn. Airbender. Airbender. Yeah. No, no, no. Rent the original, burn the remake. No, it's a horrible, horrible. Look, it's an incredible. Both of them are incredibly well made, but it's a horrible, horrible ordeal to sit through. That. Well, so is life as we know it. But you did that. Oh no, no, horrible. There, look, there's unbearable, and then there is just horrible. <laughs> they're, they're not the same category. It's disease ridden. Yes. <laughs> Tail right, seventy four still going off in the chat room. <laughs> Sorry. He's just mad. He goes, "Well, what is it like, Wizard of Oz?" Yeah. yeah. What's wrong with or, uh, we was Burn. Another one there. Blake Edwards movie. That, look, it's my favorite the, the movie. Party. Oh, hey, the dude. Party. Yeah, we're going to talk about Blake Edwards movie, The Party. There we go. There you go. Bye. Great. Burn, 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 okay, burn, moving burn. on. Uh, Jibabla. They told me how to pronounce it in the room and now I forgot. It's X-I-B-L-A-B-A-49. Jibabla, maybe? Of course, Jibabla. How would it be? Uh, Shibupi. The Road. You know, I read the book, which was amazing, and the movie not surprisingly, didn't really stand up to the book. I thought it was a very conventional film of a very unconventional book, but I guess I'll say rent it. It's like The Road Warrior without cars. Um, uh, <laughs> or action. Yeah, or action. Yeah. I, I, I'm gonna, yeah, rent, very, very l low rent. And by the way, the boy in that film who almost single-handedly ruined that movie, although not his fault, he's gr that same kid is great in Let Me In. Yeah. Same kid. The road True. got me in trouble with my wife because I, I put it on and we were watching it yeah. and she hated it so much. She got up and left the room and she and I stayed in there and finished it. And then uh, after the movie's over, she's like, I can't believe you watched that whole movie. Because <laughs> it was just disturbing, you know, yeah. it, it, it well, was. That's it good. Was, no, movies that are disturbing, that's... Post-apocalyptic, running around, running into cannibals. Yeah. yeah. Most but of the movie. I, I got in trouble for continuing that one. There were uh, two movies I've gotten in trouble for finishing. And one of them is that, and the other one's the uh, Natural Born Killers. Oh, you know, know what? I spit on your grave. We got two more. <laughs> I didn't make her watch that one. Yeah. All right, we got two more, guys. Here we go. Here's for my go. SP Wright asks about Blood Diamond. I like Blood Diamond. I thought Blood Diamond was the first time that I saw Leonardo DiCaprio actually almost be a man. Burn. <laughs> burn. Burn. It's a stupid, I, stupid movie with DiCaprio, n unable completely to do any kind of a, a, an accent that makes sense. It's, a, it's supposed to be South African. I don't know what it is. It's a horrible, dumb movie. Rent. And I bought it. Rent. Sorry. Oh. I actually own it, so sorry, guys. Mark's saying uh, rent. And <laughs> bye. We have a, all three uh, opinions. Okay, one more. Chris asks about seconds. Uh, the, Frankenheimer the Frankenheimer film? film with Rock Hudson? Mm -hmm. As opposed to some yes. exploitation film about <laughs> yes. cannibals? Right. Yes. Okay. Dude, if it's the Frankenheimer Hudson, film, yes. buy that. Yeah, for sure. It's yeah. a great film. It's a great film. By the way, one of Rock Hudson's only, you know, real yeah, deal, yeah, dramatic, yeah. wow, this is really Rock Hudson performances? Well, man's favorite sport. No, not quite. The opposite. Using an obscure reference to talk about an obscure film, we are obviously being yeah. obscure. All right. So there you go, folks. So that was, what was it? Buy, rent, or burn. Yeah, buy, rent, or burn. Philip, I know you got to get back to your 614 kids, but what I'm saying is we got to say goodbye first. Okay, so uh, uh, the, the pick of the week is what? Uh, pick of the week is... It's kind of a funny story. Get those words all in the right order. There it is. 
no show next week, so Wade and I can stuff our faces at the DreamWorks party, which we'll tell you about <laughs> on the 21st, where we have guest David Leaf, who's a terrific documentarian. And then on the 28th, we have Laura Keitlinger, who is super duper funny. And you have until the 28th to watch Henry, Portrait of and a I Serial Killer, for the Halloween show, where I am going to dress as a, what am I dressing as? Harem girl. As a harem girl, <laughs> if I can get the costume, if someone provides the costume, I will wear it. I'll give you a P.O. box you can send a harem girl costume to. I bet you somebody will do it. I, I and November 11th, I believe it's November 11th, Paul F. Tompkins. Whoa! Nice. Paul F. Tompkins. Getting some serious guests coming up. That's right. We love the right. Paul F. Tompkins. All right, folks, so there you go. We'll see you in two weeks. Good night. Woo!